program in Jeff. Thank you so much, Jeff. Seriously. No, it doesn't cost much. You just go buy it. Yeah. You put enough water, but not too much. Looks great. Oh, yeah. No, it really does. And it only has to do for like two days, three days. Right. It looks terrible from here, but who cares? That's what the outdoor is. They don't do it for us. You can't do it your phone while we're in it. I hide it in my program. I'm a seasoned veteran of the, all this. How many students get chewed out? Stage party, you may be seated. Good afternoon, and welcome to the 2023 pre-commencement ceremony for St. Louis University's Richard A. Schaeffert School of Business. It is my pleasure to welcome the class of 2023. <laughs>
Thank you. I now invite Father Carlos Esparza of the Society of Jesus to the podium for the invocation. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we beg you to send your blessing upon this assembly, and most especially upon this class of 2023 at the Chaffetz School of Business. We are grateful for our graduates. They have built up our community. They have shared their talents and ingenuity with us. Their resilience has made us bolder and better. We will watch them depart with reluctance, yet also with pride, for we know how much our city, our nation, our world need them. They are truly men and women for and with others. We are grateful for their families who have shared that is which is most precious to them, their children, and we acknowledge with profound appreciation their sacrifices that have made this joy-filled day possible. We are grateful for those at St. Louis University that have nurtured these fine young men and women for faculty and staff, for benefactors and friends who have given of themselves so that others might come to know the beauty of your creation. They have modeled generosity and compassion. They have shared wisdom and kindness, knowledge and thoughtfulness, and they have walked with our graduates on their journey at SLU. Lord God, we ask, inspire all who hear this prayer to act for justice, to share generously when confronted by need, to be the hands of your work and witnesses of your compassion and help us to discern the vocation that will bring us lasting joy in our world of constant change. In just a little while, we will take our leave. Our graduates will set forth on a new path. May your light go before them. May your love embrace them, and may your holy wisdom surround them so that they may always pursue what leads to your greater glory. And may you bless us and all whom we love this day, always, now, and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Thank you, Father Esparza. Good afternoon, family, friends, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests. My name is Bornali Gupta, and I have the distinct honor of serving as the Edward Jones Dean of the Chaffetz School of Business at St. Louis University. To the class of 2023, you were second semester first year students when we were all sent home in March 2020. And here we are today to celebrate you, the Chaffetz School of Business at St. Louis University, class of 2023. Let's give you a huge round of applause. You have excelled in the classroom, and you have done so much more than that. You have positively impacted the Chaffetz School, St. Louis University, and the community in which we live. You have organized and participated in numerous curricular and co-curricular leadership events. The two Mission Meets the Market weeks in 2022 and 2023 were organized by the Dean Student Advisory Board and our student leaders. These were new initiatives that so many of you were instrumental in leading and in promoting. You've had signature internship experiences, whether in New York or in St. Louis, and your career experiences have allowed you to apply whatever you learn in the classroom to the real world outside our beautiful campus. We have budding entrepreneurs and business consultants in our midst. We have global travelers and tech-savvy analysts in our midst. We have rising stars in finance. You are student athletes, and each of you is a leader in your own right. As I say so frequently, regardless of where you begin your career, remember that your first job is not your last. What we do know is that we are graduating compassionate, ethical, smart, and highly trained future leaders of business. I have personally been awed by your grit, 
and by your determination. Your attention to our mission and identity as a Jesuit school of business in the city of St. Louis has awed me many, many times. And very frequently, I hear a common refrain from our faculty and staff. Our students are our best asset. We could not be prouder of you. You are business billikens. Wherever your journey takes you, be confident that you are prepared to lead business with impact. I have been inspired by you, and I know this is the beginning of the unique stories that each of you will write. You are likely experiencing many different emotions, nostalgia, excitement, some anxiety, right? This is natural at big moments like this. Take it all in. You're ready. You've been fortunate to have the support on your journey. Let's express some gratitude to your faculty and staff who made your first-rate education possible, to alumni and our corporate partners who provide mentorship, experiential learning, and networking, to your friends with whom you've forged friendships that will last a lifetime, to your family and loved ones who continually inspire you to be the very best version of yourself. Please join me in a round of applause for your support network. As you graduate and move on to the next stage of your lives, know that you are now and will forever be members of the Billiken community. I'm even more excited about what the future holds for each of you because I know that this is only the beginning of the incredible stories that each of you will write. Before we continue our program this afternoon, we have two special guests with us on stage that I would like to acknowledge. First, Dr. Jerry Dwyer, a great friend of the Schaeffert School and a St. Louis University trustee. Many of you have had a chance to hear from Dr. Jerry at your senior send-off event in April. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Dwyer. Thank you. Next is another loyal supporter of the Schaeffert School and chair of the school's executive board, Mr. Mike Medart. Mike and his family have been instrumental in helping us achieve many of the institutional successes we've celebrated these past few years. Thank you, Mike, for all you do and for being with us to celebrate today. And now, I'm thrilled to introduce one of your peers and invite her to the podium to share her success. Hannah Kraft is a graduating senior majoring in marketing. She has been a dedicated leader on the Dean Student Advisory Board, most recently serving as Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. She is also a three-year member of the Service Leadership Advisory Board and a two-time member of the Service Day Committee. While studying abroad in Madrid in 2021, she worked as the English teacher and has volunteered her time here at home to mentor students at Loyola Academy and to immigrants and refugees through the International Institute of St. Louis. I have been so impressed with Hannah and her work, and it is my great pleasure to introduce her and invite her to the podium. Thank you, Dean Gupta. So, I guess we're doing this. That's what we're all thinking, isn't it? The big day is finally here. The one we've dreamt of after studying hours on hours for an accounting test we somehow barely passed, after each tuition payment that made our decision to come to SLU a little more real, and after each registration day, fingers shaking, 
trying to type in those course registration numbers faster than everybody else who wanted an Econ 1900 our freshman spring. So, I guess we're doing this. It's the same thought we had running through our heads as we sat exactly where we are now, students and parents alike, at convocation four years ago, about to embark on our biggest journey yet. Our life has been full of these moments, and a lot of them we as students have shared, like applying to live in seven grand and hoping we chose our roommates and suite mates well, walking into our first class and not knowing where we would sit making the long trek to the Wool Center to hopefully pass our Excel certification, and moving out of our dorms only nine months in over our first spring break. For some of us, applying to study abroad and hoping we would be awake to make that next flight we had, or bombing a first assignment and dropping a class or two along the way. And for many of us, interviewing on Zoom for our first internships and jobs. But before some of these experiences became moments of anxiety and panic for us, before we came to business school, where we call our aspirations goals, expectations, and strategic outcomes, these were all dreams. We dreamt of getting into the perfect university. We dreamt of the independence of going off to college. And we dreamt of new challenges, new horizons, and of getting a big job in the city. But why don't we call these dreams anymore? As a child, I didn't have goals for my papa to buy me a pony or strategic outcomes in true business fashion for Santa Claus to bring me a gumball machine for Christmas. These were all dreams. And with dealing with dreams, the sky was the limit. So when did we stop dreaming and why? For me, dreams just came true. They didn't cause pain, they didn't require struggle, or require hard work and determination to get to. Dreams came true, like magic. So swapping out the label makes sense. Expectations and goals require work, and that's what makes them achievable. Dreams, on the other hand, rarely seem to come true anymore and could be chalked up to luck. This isn't meant to sound lazy or unaspirational, but it's meant to show that I believe we have our definitions wrong and it's limiting us. One thing I love about SLU is the Jesuit mission. Let me tell you, the Jesuits were onto something when they valued the pursuit of knowledge equally to the pursuit of personal growth and our own happiness. St. Ignatius of Loyola himself encouraged the idea of not only spiritual, but of imaginative practices. So if the Jesuits say it's fine, then why, what's stopping us from dreaming? Life, life does. If you hadn't noticed, life really sucks sometimes. It gets in the way, it takes us down a million paths we never wanted to be on. It makes abrupt U-turns right before our destination and oftentimes, it leaves us further and further away from the dreams we once had. And instead of trusting where life is calling us, like the Ignatian spirituality encourages us to do, we get caught up in our own timeline. And we don't stop to think that we might have new dreams now that we're so close to achieving. Let me tell you a story. A dream of mine when I came to SLU was to go abroad. And one experience I had my heart set on was to join the spring break trip to go to Belize and study cacao farming. What's even better is that this dream had a clear, achievable plan. Apply, pack, plan, pay, go, learn, and have the experience of a lifetime. So three long years of dreaming and crossing my fingers when I finally got selected to go, I did just that. I planned for the trip, I packed my suitcase, I paid, I went, and I learned. But not what you thought. I learned that no matter how old you get and how much you plan, dreams can still get crushed. Only 48 hours into my trip, I was urgently returned back to the US because I unexpectedly got very sick. 
So this dream, which I've had for years, was just gone. Poof, it was over. And with great timing, because lucky for me, this, place, this trip took place over my last spring break ever. And I hadn't really thought past it. I know this happens to other people. You plan your life up until this one moment, and then once it's there and over with, you're like, now what? I've learned in our coursework here in the business school how critical to success it is that we all know how to plan, execute strategies, and be nimble when it's time to pivot. Well, I certainly hadn't planned for this to happen, and it felt like life came to a screeching halt. As I grasped for something to hold on to, anything to look forward to, I felt like I was taking a multiple choice quiz and my answer was none of the above every time. I had just ended my internship. I didn't know when I would start my new job. My lease was ending and I didn't know where I'd be living after graduation. Oh my gosh, graduation is two months away and I've got to write this speech. You never know and realize how long 10 minutes is until someone asks you to do something like this. The point is, I felt really lost without a plan, and I didn't know how I could have let this happen. I thought to myself, maybe if I tough it out a little longer and stay in Belize a little longer, this wouldn't be happening. Nothing my family or friends could say changed the fact that I felt like Alice falling down the rabbit hole. This moment felt bigger than I could handle, and I didn't know how to pivot. It felt like there was no plan for me and no path forward. So in true Hannah fashion, I put on my headphones and I listened to one of my favorite songs that's not only inspired this speech, but the first speech I ever gave at SLU in my freshman public speaking class. Listening to John Mayer reminded me that when we experience these moments of pain and panic in life, it's just a wave. And when it comes, we just have to hold on long enough until it's gone. There comes a time when you must move through, but this should be balanced with the expectation of compassion toward ourselves. It's no longer about what we should have or could have done. It's about what we're gonna do next. While being able to make plans is liberating and empowering, we all know that we're limited in our ability to plan. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that when things don't go the way we thought they should, we can still choose to lead lives of joy and gratitude. In other words, we always have the option to embrace what is possible. I also learned that tough situations really galvanize you and give you a pretty great story afterwards. So what does this mean as far as dreams go? It means we should not only start dreaming again, but we should be dreaming bigger. It's not about luck. It's about the skill and the will to not give up on our dreams when things get tough. The skills we've gained and the lessons we've learned in our time here as a business school have allowed us to cultivate a great amount of resiliency that we deserve to give ourselves more credit for. This means we get to have new dreams and build them with the skills and knowledge we've worked really hard to gain in our time here. Through receiving an education that values the whole person, we're equipped with the tools and knowledge to carry on in the face of adversity with the support of our SLU community behind us. As graduates of the Richard A. Chaffetz School of Business, I hope I've helped illustrate that although imposter syndrome sets in and our paths will veer into many different directions we haven't planned for, the knowledge we've gained is more than enough to fuel us as we fight the good fight and dream bigger than ever before. I can't thank my friends and family enough for your support as I've grown into the really, really tall heels that I'm wearing today. I wouldn't be who I am without you. Cheers to more imagination and more dreaming in the years to come. Thank you. I now invite Dr. Patricia Bagsby, Associate Dean for Graduate Education and last year's recipient of the Beta Gamma Sigma Outstanding Teacher Award to the podium to announce student awards and honors. Thanks.
Thank you, Hannah. Good afternoon, graduates and guests. It is truly a pleasure to begin our recognition ceremony by calling to your attention those students who have achieved special honors as a result of their academic excellence and commitment to service in the Jesuit tradition. Your program lists the names of the students. I will first announce the names of indiv individual award recipients. Would each graduate stand as I say their name and remain standing until the entire group is announced? Then we can recognize all of these students with our applause. Outstanding senior in accounting, Michaela Lugo Romero. Outstanding senior in analytics and enterprise systems, Maeve Thompson. Outstanding senior in business technology management or information technology management, Gerald Belsky. Outstanding senior in economics, Darren Mannion. Outstanding senior in entrepreneurship, Maya Tunstall. Outstanding senior in finance, Samad Arif. Outstanding senior in international business, Veronica Lisak. Outstanding Senior in Leadership and Human Resource Management, Kylie Barta. Outstanding Senior in Marketing, Hannah Kraft. Outstanding Senior in Sports Business, Austin Collinson. Outstanding Senior Intern, Jillian Capello. Outstanding Senior in Service Leadership, Stephen Rashford. Outstanding Senior Athletes, Gibson Jimerson, Cameron Tucker. The Frederick C. Yeager Service Award, Stephen Rashford. The Delta Sigma Pi Scholarship Key, Darren Mannion. The Neil Seitz Leadership Award, Mackenzie Poole. Outstanding Student and Executive Master of International Business, Lauren Walter. Outstanding Student and Master of Accounting, Brian McCall. Outstanding Student and Professional Master of Business Administration, Angelique Brown Wiggin. Outstanding Student and Master of Science in Applied Financial Economics, Amanda Wayman. Outstanding Student and Master of Supply Chain Management, Mary Elizabeth Rojas. Congratulations, award recipients. I will now announce the honor societies so that we can recognize those students who have been inducted. Please refer to your program for the complete listing of the members of each organization. I will not read each individual name, but I will ask all members to stand for each organization. Alpha Sigma Nu, the Honor Society of Jesuit Colleges and Universities, recognizes students who have distinguished themselves in scholarship, loyalty, and service in the Jesuit tradition. In recognition of your achievements, would the Alpha Sigma Nu members please rise? <laughs> Beta Gamma Sigma is the Academic Honor Society for Business Students and is the highest honor that a student at a school accredited by the AACSB can attain. I ask the Beta Gamma Sigma members to please rise to be recognized for your achievements. A number of honor societies are dedicated to specific business disciplines. When your organization is announced, please rise and be recognized for your achievements. Beta Alpha Psi is the International Academic Honor Society for Financial Information Professionals, including accounting, business technology management, finance, information technology management, and analytics enterprise systems. Beta Alpha Psi members, please rise. Omicron Delta Epsilon emphasizes scholastic achievement in the field of economics. 
Omicron Delta Epsilon members, please rise. In addition to the honors groups just recognized, there are other university-wide honors groups such as Golden Key, National Society of Collegiate Scholars, and Omicron Delta Kappa to which students may belong. If you are a member of any honors group not previously announced, please stand and be recognized. Each spring, the university sponsors a forum for, se for seniors to showcase projects or papers. I ask all those participating in the Senior Legacy Symposium to please stand and be recognized. Congratulations to each of you on these special recognitions of your hard work and commitment to excellence. I now invite Dr. Badisha Chakrabarty, Associate Dean for Research and Faculty Affairs, to the podium. Congratulations, graduates, on these achievements. Before we go ahead, where are the APM folks? Make some noise. So here's the cord. Our faculty's ability to engage students in the pursuit of knowledge is part of what makes St. Louis University's education impactful. It is my distinct honor to recognize the recipients of this year's Teaching and Research Awards, awardees here with us today. Graduate Business Faculty of the Year, Dr. Frank Wong. Yes. Executive Masters in International Business, Outstanding Teacher, Dr. Nitish Singh. <laughs> Teaching Innovation Award, Dr. Trisha Bagsby. <laughs> Father Thomas Knapp, SJ Distinguished Faculty Member Award. Dr. Yan Sun. And Faculty Three-Year Research Award for Full Professors, Dr. Mark Arnold. Congratulations to our award-winning faculty. I now invite Ms. Debbie Pike, Associate Dean for Undergraduate Education to the podium to present the graduates. We will now begin the presentation of the 2023 Richard A. Chaffetz School of Business degree candidates. I now invite Dr. Yen Sun, Chair of the Department of Accounting to the podium to present our first group of graduates. I am pleased to recognize our graduates earning a Bachelor of Science degree in Accounting.
Ignacio Arangaran Villarreal, cum laude. Gerald Cassidy Belsky, Accounting and Business Technology Management, summa cum laude. Leo Seamus Briscoe. Jenica V. Kane, magna cum laude. William Miskell Draper, Accounting and Finance. Philip J. Ernman, Finance and Accounting, magna cum laude. Samuel Vincent Farrell. Annie Collette Hillhouse, Accounting and Finance, cum laude. Victor M. Himmich. Josephine Elizabeth Horn, cum laude. Gabrielle Marie Huminski, summa cum laude. Michaela Lugo Romero, summa cum laude. Joseph Pierce Marnell, Accounting and Finance. Mia Lillian McGrath, Accounting and Sports Business, summa cum laude. Blake Kenneth Petrowski, magna cum laude. Jessica Ann Schneider. Woo! Megan Janina Shoup. Jaya Nicole Thomas. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Palash Barra, Chair of the Department of Operations and Information Technology Management to the podium to present the next three groups of graduates. I'm pleased to recognize our graduates earning a Bachelor of Science in Analytics and Enterprise System, Business Technology Management, or Information Technology Management. The following, the following students earned a major in Analytics and Enterprise Systems. Maninder Carr. <laughs> Daniel Rudman. Maeve Marie Thompson, magna cum laude. Preston Patrick Waldusky, Economics and Analytics and Enterprise Systems, magna cum laude. Congratulations, graduates. Our next group of students earned a major in business technology management. Luke Douglas Breckenridge, business technology management with an analytics and enterprise systems concentration. Dominique Cecil, Cecile D, 
business technology management with analytics and enterprise systems concentration, magna cum laude. Jackson B. Laster, business technology management with an analytics and enterprise systems concentration. For our next graduate, I would like to invite the father of our student to come up. He is from the School of Medicine and would like to be here to celebrate his son's graduation. I know, isn't it cute? All right. <laughs> Oliver Canis Feldenberg. Congratulations, graduates. Our next group of students earned a major in information technology management. Tessa Catherine Bellante, magna cum laude. David Alexis Moreno Hernandez. Allison Macy Weiss. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Heilong Chen, Chair of the Department of Economics to the podium to present the next group of graduates. I'm pleased to recognize our graduates earning a Bachelor of Science degree in economics. Madison L. Bailey, cum laude. Diego Martin Colado. Nicole Elizabeth Fortney, magna cum laude. Caitlin May Fowler, Economics and Finance, magna cum laude. Ty R. Hyde. Molly G. Jelling Taylor, International Business and Economics, cum laude. Gabriel S. Jennerjohn, Economics and Political Science with a Public Law Concentration. <laughs> Do Hyun Kim, Cum Laude. <laughs> Sophie Lynn Kishish. Ching Wen Lee, magna cum laude. <laughs> Huang Mi Di Luong, summa cum laude. <laughs> Darren Mitchell Mannion, summa cum laude. Joshua T. McCullough, Economics and Sports Business, cum laude. Connor Michael McClary. Annalise Siobhan Ogle. Nico Salvino. Sarah Sargent, summa cum laude. J. 
James Frederick Shackleton IV. Ishan Singh. James Joseph Spinola, Jr., Economics and Finance. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Christopher Thomas, Chair of the Department of Management, to the podium to present the next three groups of graduates. Congratulations to our graduates earning a Bachelor of Science in Entrepreneurship, Leadership in Human Resource Management, or Sports Business. The following students earned a major in entrepreneurship. Haley Marie Anderson, Entrepreneurship and Marketing, cum laude. <laughs> Jillian Leigh Capello. <laughs> Megan A. Cava, cum laude. John F. Coyne. Tessa Delaney Horan, cum laude. Jolino Jafari, cum laude. Abigail Kristen Nelson. <laughs> Maya Salise Tunstall, Marketing and Entrepreneurship, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Nicholas Jude Wendell, Cum Laude. Congratulations to our entrepreneurship graduates. The following students earned a major in leadership and human resource management. Kylie Jean Barta, summa cum laude. Claire M. Crow, cum laude. Lynn Deng, Leadership in Human Resource Management and Marketing. Jenna Rose Disler. Emily Madonna Engelhorn, cum laude. Eric Largent. Sean Largent, magna cum laude. Jose M. Navarro, cum laude. Alexa Marie Patrika. Anna Christine Streb, Leadership in Human Resource Management and Finance. Caitlin M. Travers. Congratulations, graduates. The following students earned a major in sports business. Yuri Collins.
Austin Joseph Collinson, cum laude. Kyle E. Compton, Accounting and Sports Business, magna cum laude. Patrick Joseph Dowd. Susanna Kate Ellis. Xinyu Huang. Madison Elizabeth Huskin, cum laude. Ryan B. Olson, Finance and Sports Business. Maxwell Kirk Peeler, cum laude. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Naresh Bansal, Chair of the Department of Finance, to the podium to present the next group of graduates. I am pleased to recognize our graduates earning a Bachelor of Science degree in Finance. Shubi Alhuwalia. Christopher E. Alwang, magna cum laude. Samad R. Arif, finance with a financial analysis concentration and accounting, summa cum laude. Christian Florin Bauer, magna cum laude. Jacob C. Bruning, in Entrepreneurship and Finance. Samuel James Bonebreak. Hunter Burke, International Business and Finance, cum laude. Leo P. Burns. Montana Cardenas, Finance and Marketing. Ryan E. Carey, Magna Cum Laude. Lorena Sino. Alexa P. Crimmins, Finance with a Real Estate Finance Concentration, Cum Laude. Enrique Cervantes, Finance and Economics. Luis Edmundo Delgado, Finance with a Real Estate Finance Concentration. Parth Manish Kumar Gandhi, Accounting and Finance. Daniel Joseph Gaynor, Finance with a Real Estate Finance Concentration. Roseanne Sahar Jarami, Finance and Economics, Magna Cum Laude. J. M. Gettin, Accounting and Finance, Summa Cum Laude. Brian Gregory Galinsky, 
Finance and Business Technology Management with an Analytics and Enterprise Systems Concentration, magna cum laude. Patrick Michael Gosser, Finance with a Financial Analysis Concentration. Jack, Tom, Jack Thomas Greco. Emma Christine Goody, summa cum laude. Brandon Lee Hayde. Bryce Morrison Handel, Entrepreneurship and Finance, magna cum laude. Angie E. Hernandez Osorto. Carly Nicole Hilgers, Finance and International Business, cum laude. Blake Patrick Hilker, Finance and International Business. Matt F. Herguth, Magna Cum Laude. Unarud Ayengar. Vrisha Jagdish, magna cum laude. Christian Salud Jimenez, international business and finance, cum laude. Carissa Yunker. Ethan James Campbellman. Yeah. Robbie Kevlishvili, Finance and Mathematics, magna cum laude. Yeah. Dosian Kim. Yeah. Mason Colin Kimbarovsky, cum laude. Stephen Michael Neepkins, cum laude. Matthew T. Kroll, Economics and Finance, magna cum laude. Grace Jane Lauer, Finance with Real Estate Finance Concentration and Marketing, cum laude. Jason Edward Lichtenauer, cum laude. Ethan Harrison Lewis, Finance and Economics. Arjun Maholtra, Finance and Business Technology Management with an Analytics and Enterprise Systems Concentration. Andrew R. McBay. James Francis McManus. John R. Micah, Finance and Sports Business, magna cum laude. Michelle B. Mustock. Michelle M. Nguyen. Sarah Naranja, International Business and Finance, cum laude.
Kevin O'Malley, finance with a real estate finance concentration. Joshua Kenneth Parney, cum laude. Kunj Kevin Patel, finance and computer science, magna cum laude. Caitlin Scarlett Pendall, cum laude. Eric Pochiha, Leadership and Human Resource Management and Finance with a Real Estate Finance Concentration. Charles Joseph Palno, Finance and Economics, Magna Cum Laude. Jeanette C. Robb, Cum Laude. Stephen Christopher Rashford, summa cum laude. Jacob Wade Rhodes. Maximilian K. Telfer. Raphael. J. McKay. Evangeline Rose Setch, Finance and Economics. Zachary Emerson Summerfield. Summerfield. Daniel L. Schneider, cum laude. Blake Lewis Stevenson, finance with a real estate finance concentration. Ryan Reggie Therakan. Ryan Trost, cum laude. Mitchell James Umbeck, finance and marketing, cum laude. Ryan Christopher Waller, magna cum laude. Anna Nicole Walsh, magna cum laude. Lauren M. Zanetti. John Cassily Ziegler, finance and economics, summa cum laude. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Hadi Ahor, Chair of the Department of International Business to the podium to present our next group of graduates. I'm pleased to recognize our wonderful and awesome graduates earning a Bachelor of Science in International Business. Chloe Catherine Irene Abernathy. <laughs> William Maurice Aris, magna cum laude. <laughs> Alicia Avellaneda Cruz, international business and Business Technology Management within Analytics and Enterprise Systems Concentration, cum laude. Susanna M. Bereschuk. <laughs> 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 
Jamal Mikhail Borden, cum laude. Emre Budak. Yuang Elson Chen. Joshua Collins. Caleb Hale Coyne. Sean Dermot Crana. Marley E. Dunham, International Business and Economics, cum laude. Tatiana Isabel Escandon. Emily Christina Gamboa. Jillian Marie Gomez, Marketing and International Business. Max Everett Grainer, International Business and Business Technology Management with an Analytics and Enterprise Systems Concentration, cum laude. May Rose Fusha Jedzidniak. International Business and Marketing, cum laude. Veronica Anna Lisak, International Business and Economics, magna cum laude. Jessica Lopez, Marketing and International Business, cum laude. Lucas Martinez Arregui, International Business and Communication with Journalism and Media Studies Concentration, cum laude. Enrique Francisco Marzal Ruano, cum laude. Sebastian Jose Oliveira. Megan Jane Strawn, Marketing and International Business. <laughs> Sophia Kennedy Ware, Cum Laude. <laughs> Jessica T. Watson, Magna Cum Laude. Jesse Yuan Fan Williams, International Business and English, magna cum laude. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Mark Arnold, Chair of the Department of Marketing, to the podium to present the next group of graduates. I am pleased to recognize our graduates earning a Bachelor of Science degree in marketing. Christy Lynn Ahn. <laughs> Ryan Gerard Armstrong. <laughs> Mary Jean Baldwin, cum laude. Graham Edward Bartal, magna cum laude.
Madeline Brooke Bear, cum laude. Daniel Bruce Bernus, cum laude. Lauren Brace, Marketing and Business Technology Management with an Analytics and Enterprise Systems Concentration. Ethan B. Kamba, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Hannah Joelle Kraft, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Emily E. Devier, Marketing and Analytics and Enterprise Systems. Alex Shin Dinwiddie. <laughs> Kathleen Grace Fahey, cum laude. <laughs> Tegan E. Flaherty. Delaney Marie Isaacson, Marketing and International Business, Magna Cum Laude. Jude N. Kadir. Savannah Avalon Koch, Magna Cum Laude. Lydia R. Luddington. Elizabeth Mamie McKendry, cum laude. Dana Fadi Musla. Teresa Renee Putz, Magna Cum Laude. Cameron Claire Rowland. Adriana M. Scaglarini. Lydia Jane Sheridan, cum laude. Isaac Michael Smith, marketing and an English research with an intensive English concentration, cum laude. Lena Stavry. Olivia Maria Talat Kelpsa. <laughs> Megan Ann Tensing. <laughs> Brittany Sandra Tasse. <laughs> Ashley Ann Wickenhauser. Leadership in Human Resource Management and Marketing, Magna Cum Laude. Brant Dennis Wilhelm, Cum Laude. Ainsley J. Worthley. Congratulations, graduates. This concludes the presentation of our bachelor degree candidates. So let's have one last round of applause for that group.
And now it's my pleasure to begin the presentation of our master degree candidates. I now invite Dr. Yen Sun back to the podium to present our next group of graduates. Congratulations to our graduates earning a Master of Accounting. Included in this group are students in our integrated accounting program who are earning both a Bachelor of Science in Accounting and a Master of Accounting concurrently. John Michael Althoff, Jr. Mary Catherine Brigastras, Bachelor of Accounting and Master of Accounting, magna cum laude. Clementina Maria Chehoski. Lindsay Lee Ferguson. Chloe Gabrielle Hannon. Mary Caroline Hilton. Joshua William Cackley. Hannah Lee Keller. Bachelor of Accounting and Master of Accounting, summa cum laude. Brian Patrick McCall. Neil Hu Ong. Alyssa Ann Raymackle. Melinda A. Schweppe, Bachelor of Accounting and Master of Accounting. <laughs> Chloe Fay Wenling, Bachelor of Accounting and Master of Accounting, cum laude. <laughs> Brianna Nicole Worth, Bachelor of Accounting and Master of Accounting, cum laude. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Tricia Bagsby back to the podium to present our next group of graduates. Congratulations to the following graduates earning a Master of Business Administration. Olumayowa Adekunle. <laughs> Jerome John Amsler, Jr. Haley Baker. Corey James Brenner. Angelique Victoria Marie Brown Wigan. Lauren Elise Kaywine. Okay. Ethan Merritt Chapman. Serene Khaled Dowd. Tyler Alexander Deshawn. Garrett Niles Damash. <laughs> Jeremy, 
Nima Farugi. Kyle Steven Gavelic. Parker Scott Green. Andrew Steven Hargis. Reed Woodson Hawkins. Grecia E. Hernandez Nava. Anna Elizabeth Hill. Chidi Felix Okafor. Jared Robert Kammerer. Joshua Calvin Kammerer. Thevel Bagarath Katbama. Gori Kaushal. Chayanis Kurdsuk. Babatope Ayamid Kolawale. Grant Lane Kramer. Nicholas E. Lally. Sarah Marie Lemoyne Davidson. Patrick Robert Leonard. Joshua Phillips Maffey. <laughs> Teresa McInnes. <laughs> Aiden G. Morley. <laughs> Jacob Ryan Muth. Bilkis Arianju Ordwale. <laughs> Amanda Ogilvy. <laughs> Olivia Rose Owens. Ryan Nicholas Patel. <laughs> Mackenzie Kaylin Poole. <laughs> Scott Thomas Restoff. Sarah Elizabeth Rutherford.
Adam Patrick Ryan. Vanila Salma. Michael Kenneth Skeppelhorn. Morgan Marlene Schetzel. Kyle Dean Simpson. Travis Ray Stevener. Jackson Robert Theobald. Elizabeth Ashley Williams. Xavier Williams. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Heilong Chen back to the podium to present our next graduate. Congratulations to the following graduates earning a Master of Science in Applied Financial Economics. Amanda May Wayman. Congratulations, graduate. I now ask Dr. Palash Barra to please return to the podium to present our next group of graduates. Uh, okay. Congratulations to the following graduates earning a Master of Science in Supply Chain Management. Tasnova Afros. Chandrakanth Banothu. Vishwa Chandan Reddy Biram. Neeten Chawla. Venkata Sai Kumar Darapaneni. Shuai Feng. Divya Sai Ananya Gadaraju. David Karash. Fatima Parvez Kazi. Chinme Anil Kadkotkar. Sid Kare. Kirthana Reddy Sunkara. <laughs> Moses Reddy Pata. <laughs> Yakubek Omanov. Mary Lisbeth Rojas. Woo! 
Chen Chen Shao. John Carlos Tofern. Shi Che Wang. Congratulations, graduates. I now invite Dr. Hadi Al Hor back to the podium to present the next group of graduates. Congratulations to the following graduates earning an Executive Masters of International Business. Nicole E. Barnes. <laughs> Paul Edward Cave IV. Matthew David Dean. Lauren Meredith Walter. Now that all of our degree candidates have been presented to you, let's have one last round of applause. I now ask Dean Gupta to go to the podium to introduce our next guest. I will find the right place. I invite Dr. Mark Arnold, Chair, I apologize. I invite Dr. Ben Mamoon, Director of the PhD program and Associate Professor of International Business to the podium to present the next group of graduates. He's not here? Okay, thank you. Our final graduate could not make it here this afternoon, so we are going to move on. Our final speaker this afternoon represents the incredible community of Shafet School alumni you now join as graduates of this storied institution. Dan Wessel, is a 1991 graduate of the accounting program. Since 1995, he has worked at Enterprise Holdings, most recently at their wholly owned subsidiary, Integral. In 2021, Dan was promoted to Vice President of Global Business Management, overseeing worldwide administrative functions for all lines of the business. Always ready to support the community, Dan serves on the Dean's Executive Board for the Schaefer School and on the Board of Trustees of the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. He is also the treasurer for County Public, a community-oriented triennial civic exhibition of contemporary art. It is my honor to invite Dan to the podium to share his reflections with you today. Sorry, a lot of administration up here. Uh, thank you, Dean Gupta, and good afternoon to you, our distinguished trustees, graduates, parents, family, and friends. To begin, let me offer my sincere congratulations to the class of 2023 
I, I gotta tell you, that was really impressive, just hearing everything as you guys crossed the stage. You did it. Please, one more time, a round of applause. That was amazing. So I'm thrilled to get the opportunity to spend some time with you today, and I'm incredibly honored that Dean Gupta asked me to say a few words. In full transparency, the exact question she asked me to address was, what role has St. Louis University played in your life? For the record, she also asked me to be interesting, tell a good story, and leave you wanting more, all in 10 minutes or less. So let's get after it. <laughs> what role has St. Louis University played in my life? I'll share three of many, but first let me explain why I love SLU and why I'm so happy to be here. What Dean Goop did not mention in my introduction is that I'm the oldest of eight children from a small town in rural Missouri. We didn't go on any barnstorming tour to decide which college to attend. We were basically told we could attend any university as long as it was Catholic and in the city limits of St. Louis. Here we have it. <laughs> my dad attended SLU for a while, and then he and mom graduated next door at Harris Stowe. I also had two uncles who graduated as Billikens, so the university must have made quite an impression on them back in the 60s, because they ended up sending all eight kids here. My parents were clearly all in on SLU. Now, while eight of us attended SLU, only seven of us graduated from here. And the one who didn't, well, he's still around. For those of you who may have seen the big six foot six groundskeeper, I think they call him Lion Man. He's got mop top hair and a long red beard. That's my little brother, Tommy. He's gonna be here longer than the rest of us combined by the time it's all said and done. To say the least, St. Louis University is in our DNA. Now, with, the, with that backdrop, here's role number one that SLU played in my life. It got me comfortable being uncomfortable. To be completely honest, when, I came, when it came my turn to come to St. Louis University, I was incredibly intimidated. Frankly, I was this small town kid who didn't know a soul in the St. Louis area. I ended up in a single room on three Clemens and would go to breakfast at Greasy Dick Cafeteria at six in the morning just so I didn't have to see anybody or talk to anybody. In the early days of my freshman year, I would return home whenever I could. Life in the big city started out a little rough for me. Eventually, though, a number of people, including faculty, staff, and classmates, helped me get engaged. As I became, as I became more engaged and joined conversations more easily, I became more involved. I was asked to tutor children at city schools, signed up for a couple of clubs. I even started a campus band. By the time I was a senior, I was the president of ORFLAM, which is the organization who oversees new student orientation. A great accomplishment for someone who couldn't even look strangers in the eye for my first couple of weeks here. I'm incredibly thankful to the several kind people along the way who saw potential in me, asked me to join their circle, and encouraged me to do more. And I eventually returned the favor over the years at SLU and beyond. So as you go forward, I encourage each of you to get out of your comfort zone, take risks, talk to strangers, listen to new ideas, and please have tolerance for other opinions and communication styles. Never stop learning and inspire others to do the same. You could change somebody's life and trajectory with one conversation, and that is one heck of an accomplishment. That brings me to role number two that the university played in my life. Seek out mentors and expand your network. I was lucky enough to always have pretty good grades, top three in my high school class, which, which actually means number three, <laughs> and my bachelor's degree says magna cum laude. I was okay at studying and good at class participation, but I was great at professor management. Sorry, Dean Gupta. <laughs> there wasn't a set of office, open office hours that I didn't have memorized. These days they call it managing up, but when I was here it was the best way I knew to take every advantage. For example, as an undeclared business major, I had a really good experience in my Accounting 101 class with Dr. Kirk Filipich. He became a mentor of mine and asked me to consider taking his 201 class. I did, and I eventually told Dr. Filipich I was going to become an accounting major. Shortly thereafter, he told me he had a friend at Ernst & Young who was looking for someone to do some project work, asked me if I'd be interested in helping out. I didn't hesitate. I took the spot at EY, which turned into an internship, which turned into full-time employment upon graduation. All of this due to the person who I would consider my first university mentor, Dr. Filipich. Now let me tell you, in the real world, office hours aren't clearly as defined as they are in college. Sometimes it's just a quick one-on-one -on -one meeting. Sometimes it's early morning. Sometimes it's lunch or happy hour. It might even mean a weekend round of golf or catching a ball game. Oh, and this definitely applies whether you're working in person or remotely. 
The point is, I would encourage all of you to take some of the lessons learned in role number one and apply them to number two. Get uncomfortable by taking the first step in identifying and pursuing a mentor that you admire, then build your network and continue to learn and find advantages as you progress throughout your professional careers. Okay, now under role number three that SLU has had on my life. Whatever you do, it takes work to make it great. When my parents got married, they didn't have much money. It was way before cable television, much less streaming services. To pass the time, my dad picked up needlepoint, of all things, as a hobby and made various items during their pre-children days, all nine months of those. One piece he made for me hung above my bed as a kid, and I still have it today. It was an elaborate boat with the following phrase sewn, sewn below it. Don't wait for your ship to come in, swim out after it. As a kid in rural Missouri with very few seafaring vessels nearby, I don't think this message really resonated with me until I came to SLU and had all this unfettered freedom. As all of you know, that freedom comes with a lot of choices. Sleep in or study, watch Netflix or do some volunteer work, do some work study or incur student debt, the list goes on. I can't say it was perfect, but I had high expectations for myself, and that's when my dad's message hit home. I knew that if I put the work in, if I swam out after that ship, good things would happen. Besides serving as president of Oriflam and holding an internship at Ernst & Young, I was also the president of a volunteer organization on campus, vice president of my fraternity. I played in two different bands and had a work-study position, as well as maintaining a pretty decent GPA. I learned the more that I got involved, the more I was capable of achieving, and that greater effort, efforts typically equal greater results. And I've lived by that lesson ever since. I ended up working two great, for two great companies during my post-collegiate career, Ernst & Young and Enterprise Holdings. Time out. I'm actually contractually obligated to tell you that Enterprise Holdings is the largest employer of college graduates. If you're looking for a great career and you're still trying to figure it out, please come see us, okay? Time in. Both of these organizations, though, are meritocracies. I worked hard, and they recognized my effort and performance and rewarded me for it. And I know the same can be true for all of you as well. With graduation, you're about to embark on a new journey with new freedoms, new choices, and many new opportunities. Find yours, set your course, then go swim out after that ship. And whatever course you take, I encourage you to find an employer, a community, a partner who will work with you, help bring out the very best in you, and let you build a life and career as great and fulfilling as you possibly can. Oh, that word partner reminds me of one more reason I love St. Louis University. I met my wife at SLU. I didn't know it at the time. We were regularly in each other's social circles, but we owe our life and the lives of our children to St. Louis University. I wouldn't be who I am today without the incredible Sarah Sakura. As it turns out, we have had two of our five children achieve their undergraduate degrees from the university, and one went on to graduate from SLU Law. Emma and Lizzie, we couldn't be prouder of you and, hope, and glad that you have had the chance to create your own experiences here. We're happy to have re-engaged with the university after all of our moves and remain very proud of our alma mater. That leads me to my last words of encouragement. Way back in the 1500s, St. Francis Xavier was preparing to depart on a life journey as part of the Jesuit order. As he prepared to head out on his worldly mission, most likely to never return, the founder of the Jesuits, St. Ignatius of Loyola, gave him some words of encouragement to take with him. My best St. Ignatius voice, by the way. Go forth and set the world on fire with the love of God. I can imagine the 21st century version of St. Ignatius here today saying the same thing to all of you. And I have to tell you that with your degree from St. Louis University, Chaffetz School of Business, I think you have a pretty good head start. Right, Dean Gupta? So again, congratulations to all of you. Thank you, and Godspeed. Thank you, Dan. And now we come to the close of our ceremony. This day always brings excitement and anticipation for the incredible things that we all know each of you will do. As you have your eyes on the future, history 
has its eyes on you. On you. What will you accomplish? How will you be a business leader for and with others? How will you make the communities in which you live more just and equitable for all? How will you bring Mission Meets the Market to life as a business billiken? Your time at the Shafet School and St. Louis University has uniquely positioned you to be a difference maker, a change agent, a force for good, in business and far beyond. With your eyes toward the future, our eyes are on each of you, and we can't wait to see what you will accomplish. Congratulations, good luck, stay in touch, and may the Ignatian spirit of St. Louis University forever live in your hearts. has left the arena, please follow the marshals and proceed down the center aisle, exiting to the rear. We have a graduation gift for each of you, so please be sure to stop at the tables near the loading dock doors where you will exit the arena. As there is another ceremony following this one, please join your families and friends outside the arena. Thank you, and we look forward to tomorrow's university commencement ceremony.